up everybody, my name is Crytek and Mom, and welcome back to some more Genshin Impact. Oh my god, that was the best 10 pull of my entire life, it's my first double 5 star! time I'm adventuring 60 I do feel it's hard to change because I actually really need an EM sand if I'm gonna make a better so right now this is probably the build I'm going to run until <laughs> further notice and again as a side thing to say my EM weapon here literally edges out the damage of my gravestone ever so slightly better which is just amazing C1 Talents is 9, 10, 10. And it's the first time I've ever done it because I never ever crowned a unit before I started, you know, hitting a certain point because I wanted to prove that you can beat the Abyss 36 star without, with like, without any crowns. And I've done that, so I started crowning and just want to make something just better. But it's finally time to do this, man. It's GG's, D-Luke. For you, your character, I still like playing and I won't stop playing you. Even though I don't really claim myself with a D-Luke main, I do like a character a lot. He's up there for me. I'm a person that likes to play a lot of different units, so it's hard for me to justify it, but... That doesn't mean I don't like playing you, D-Luke. GG's, brother. GG. It's time to fight something. Let's get down to nitty gritty. You can already tell. It's another year. It's that time again. Today is the one year. My one year anniversary. This is my second year of me playing Genshin Impact. And put things into perspective. We are now in Sumeru. Patch 3.5. Last year, it was patch 2.5. Five, when I did the first one year and I was actually AR-57 almost AR-58 but here we had this new region which isn't even finished yet I'm certain there's like another sub part region that we're gonna get of Sumeria before we move on to Fontaine region just like how we just got the chasm after the one year because the chasm pads was not too long after Man, a lot of that story quest good. I enjoyed that for the while that it was there. But it's always nice to look back on things where I had last started, which was with Inazuma. The way 
am going to edit it this time moving forward compared to you know the previous year where I explained things but I think the music was too loud over my voice which felt pretty bad but I hope you guys do look back at that you know the last video of what happened last year but this year I have some things I want to get off my chest in a way that I can make this easier to you know absorb the information and I have a lot of things I want to show as I had already showed in the beginning a lot of the greatest moments on my account has been some of the greatest I have ever had for my first year going into my second year of Genshin and it's absolutely ridiculous how it happened it's it doesn't make any sense I mean the luck that I showed the damage I've done the improvements to what kits I wanted to use and back then I had mentioned that I had just started counting kits and I wanted to prove that I could start started this without crowning and I did that it feel pretty good but let's get into this I am now AR 60 I hit AR 60 not too long after getting into the Sumeria region so everything's been pretty nice and pretty clean a lot of the things to show as well but I guess we will start with the characters now last year I only showed a total of eight that I've owned well now It's went up to like 14 with the amount of characters I've got. Because during the year that I had finished up, I had gotten Ganyu. Then I went for Yelon on a guarantee. Kazuha. I got. Hu Tao, Yoimiya, Nahida. I showed all of these in summons. Because I went on the largest 50 50 streak win I've ever seen. I don't know if anyone's had it like that, but. Food for thought, even though I don't have the footage, but if you want to actually go back at the beginning to play through my channel and just skim through my footage and whatnot. My first 5 star was Mona. I got her on my second stream of me playing the game, which was literally day two of me playing Genshin Impact. Then day three I got Diluc, but technically I got them the same day <laughs> for what it was worth and it was an enjoyable time for that. But the story goes that I had gotten Venti not too long, I think of patch 1.4 when I got Venti, then we move on forward, then we got a boy Jean Lee, got him on a 50-50, then I went on a losing streak of 50-50s to only Jean. <laughs> Granted, I have received four. I've only lost her four times. Because what's another thing that's pretty remarkable, I felt pretty lucky on the standard banner as well. I got Diluc. I got Mona. I got Chi Chi. I got my first gene off the standard banner. I have a Diluc constellation and a Mona constellation, but those are also from the standard banner. Which is just pretty funny for what it's worth. Now to the inventory. Here, I want to show this off. This is nothing special to some people that, you know, spends more than I do. Because this is just welcome player logic. But I think I have more weapon than some people should have. Just because of, if you haven't seen the beginning clips. I mean, I got double five stars. I had a really good streak. There were weapons I wanted when I first started. And I had talked in my one year anniversary of the game for my first year of me actually doing Genshin. Now we are shifting our gears to preparing for third round whenever Fontaine comes around to see in the next region. But I've gotten so many weapons. I mean, I my, my last weapon I gotten was Shenha's weapon when I had summoned for it. And... I didn't want it because back then I wanted Jade Spear, but hey, it is what it is. I have a lot of new weapons since I had last <laughs> showed off the weapon to and whatnot. I had a pretty good streak ranging from the Mist Splitters that I didn't really show, which that was one that could have been considered a double fight strike. I got them a temple off of each other. The Jade Cutters I got on a double five star. We don't talk about these two. But the current weapon banner just didn't give me the great sword I would have wanted, which I'll show later. We got Amos Bow. 
I lost a 2575 on a weapon banner to Gravestone and then got another one off the standard banner. I summoned for this on purpose, but we don't talk about that either. I hope it gets used in the future, but it might honest get, honestly get tossed and whatnot, but yeah. A lot of other weapons were just standard banner. And then some of the 2575 like almost bow. I just I feel more fortunate for some of the weapons I did get. But compared to last year, I had only gotten like six five star weapons. As you can clearly tell, I have a lot more than before. It's actually quite remarkable to see that I have yeah, 16 five star weapons, just need to confirm. But now we're into artifacts. Now before I show everything I got here from the clips that I have prepared, I'll show my greatest moments that I have clipped throughout the year going into my second year. So as you can see, there's a lot of goodness in what I've gotten. And I really, really, really enjoyed some of the best ones I've showed, but there are some clips I forgot to keep because there were some I had, and I deleted that footage. I do not have them anymore, but I could always show out the weapons that are artifacts I did get during that you know time and whatnot. So these were the artifacts that I have gotten that I had treasured the most and are some of the best that. Compared to last year's that I also show here, it's it's something, right? I had a lot of good artifacts, but nothing that really stood out if you want to see like the best of the best or whatever the hell. But I had a lot of good artifacts. And I feel pretty fortunate for that. Well now, looking at my artifacts here, uh, <laughs> for the ones I showed at the time, the one that I've gotten recently, nothing crazy, but these are just artifacts that are locked that are just, I haven't, I have a character for it, but this was one that could have been clip worthy, but I didn't clip it, this was attack sands. I could have clipped this piece because it has perfect substance to a degree, like every stat's being used. This is an artifact I got throughout going into my second year, essentially. This artifact's pretty good as well. I also got this artifact, which surprises me that I don't think I found any footage of me clipping it. I must have, like, raised it on stream or something. But this artifact I didn't see amongst what I had from last year because I have another one that looks similar to it that's being used on a character, being my Ganya. But this piece is really good. I mean, perfect self does. Mm -hmm. This tag circlet is something I might as well show because I don't have much else I really want to show, but this is pretty much, I think, the only other thing worth showing. Other than that, I did get this because this is my first time really farming the uh, Thunder Fury Domain because I just don't have an electro character I really want to use yet with this to a degree but I did get this and I got this one as well when it comes down to the value of artifacts I don't know what the best is to show I've had some artifacts with some really good ups but when it comes down to it some of the ones I've gotten this year aren't as good as what I've gotten last year, even like up to recent with like new pieces I've gotten but didn't make clips of because they were decent. Like this one was during this year as well. And I have clipped it and I already showed this. But there's nothing really else in terms of like compared to last year, the best pieces were my goblets. And maybe some circlets. Some sands have made up for it just barely before the final days leading up to this day but it's pretty amusing because 
Even I'm surprised with some of the artifacts I managed to get that, like, this piece here, for example, this HP circlet. And, yeah, I mean, this is nothing special. It's just an account showing off artifacts. I really love this artifact, but I didn't clip it. People would probably think this artifact's bad, but it's like one perfect substance and two characters that want EM for reactions, which is like almost almost all characters that rely on reactions to do extra damage, they actually would want the CM substance. It's pretty good. Hard to replace too. There's so many other pieces I consider perfect, like this one here as well. But again, I think some of the best artifacts I've gotten have been goblets this year, which is a bit of a surprise. Between like the Electro, which went freaking nuts, which is just funny because I just, I don't use Electro. I don't know what to do with it. Like, what am I supposed to do with it? I didn't show this one because this was actually not in a regular video of me talking about me getting this thing. It was in a, re it was in a video of me talking about how it changed my gongi build forever bro like i can't see myself without this piece because it does more damage than a crit damage circlet that is how good this attack circlet is and i should have went back and got the footage for clipping it but for real for real this artifact is so juicy that i'm showing it here as well it is such a juicy juicy artifact i like what else is there to say as per usual, there isn't much left to show for artifacts, but I want to show at least, you know, up-to-date, real-time, and I still think, again, some of the best pieces have been cobbles this year, but Sans Dick prop up out of nowhere towards the end, just leading to this day. Should I even showcase this? I might as well, because I don't think I did this last year. But yeah, I have a fuck ton of food. Believe it or not, I don't farm the food, I just have a fuck ton of resources I save up because I do expeditions every day. And it's pretty funny every time I think about it, pro people would probably think like there's something wrong with me or something, like I buy the food or something. I mean, if I did co-op and I died a lot or whatever, then it would make sense, but yeah, here's my food. You can just browse and see the astronomical amount of food I have. <laughs> But there's not that much in terms of like the overall quality of everything having a lot of pieces, you know? I guess I could show this. I used to have like 2,000 of these last year or something like that. I went through a crazy phase of getting weapons from a bit, didn't I? Of course, new resources will always proc up here every time I do one of these. Every single year. Just like these. Which I actually did for these every day last patch. I have no regrets for it. Made doing reset a little bit differently. But as you can see, I don't farm these foul or stakes, and I just have a lot of them over time because I don't use them. Except for expedition of getting like certain, you know, pieces of, you know, ingredients for food. The wood for a certain teapot. Fish for no apparent reason. Some of these are just new down here from fishing in uh, Sumeru. I mean, there's a certain event going on with Windbloom. Windbloom Season 2, Windbloom Festival came back after... Can I say two years now? Because when I first started Windbloom Festival, the first time it came out was in Patch 1.4. Which was a cool time. It wasn't as crazy as it is now. But of course, compared to this year, it's different, of course. It's not going to be the same exact event. But even this area that we're in, by the way, the gadgets, like a lot of things have changed since then. We have, you know, stuff over here as well, if you care to look at this. Even the current banner that we got going on in this deal, and Sino, these are the new characters of the Samir region compared to how last year was in year two. And this is the Godforsaken Weapon Baron that's going on. And yes, this I lost to this twice. Didn't actually think I could get it twice in time, but I definitely can't go for a third one. It sucks because this is probably the best claimer in the game. Until a better crit damage one, which I'm actually expecting there will be a better claymore again in the future. That's why I'm not going to let this get to my head. 
But it does suck that something like this, because Dia's going to standard manner, just like another character that was a Dendro character named Tainari, is on standard manner. Their respective weapons aren't on the standard lineup, so you can't even get these if you lose the 2575 or get them off the standard banner. Which I think is completely unfair to be honest. I don't see the point of not adding their signatures to it, but whatever. Let's just talk about something real quick that I'm going to do every single year moving forward. Every single year moving forward, we're going to go through this understanding of what we got down here. There is a lot of characters in the game, and there are going to be more going forward, moving forward, and whatnot. But just like everyone should have this mindset, I go by certain wish lists. I go for characters that are fun, but I also got to like their personality, and I want to be able to enjoy them everywhere I go if I want to, you know, play them a lot. Some people can find some characters like Yamiko fun, but I just don't. People find Ayato fun. I unfortunately don't. Even though I thought there was a point for it. Tainari I actually want to play, but I'd have to lose a 50-50 to him. Well, unfortunately, I didn't lose a 50-50 until literally the past before this. Past 2.4 was when I first lost my entire 50-50 streak of winning in an entire year. Because, of course, I summoned for weapons too, so I didn't summon for every character. So that's probably the general consensus of that. Wander, I didn't summon for Skyrim, which now Skyrim is a playable character, which is funny. There's still a possibility I might just get him for the sake of the game, just because I changed the name, but I don't care. Probably not going to get him. Don't want Nila. Dia, I really do want to get if I get it on for a loss of 50 50, but who knows. This character is on my wish list, so if I end up with him the next time around, you know why. In another region. Sino, I don't want him. Ito is on my wish list. Shenha's this past, but I actually had to skip her because of the way my summons went with Huto. Albedo's on my wish list. I'm sorry, Yulin, but I just cannot. I'm sorry, Yaka. I really cannot. <laughs> Kokomi, I actually kind of want. I used to want this character, but I cannot bring it in me to get him. So, if anyone even cared about me getting this character, do not expect it. I'm just, I'm over that era now. The only chance I had was when I lost a 50-50, and after that, I don't really care about trying to go for him again. For the love of God, no. And this character is probably the one I want the most right now. Surprisingly or not. Some people still trash on this character for some reason, but I've seen a really good team with her now. I mean, now that Denzel's a thing, there's new reactions, and... Denja's reaction to Kuching is surprisingly really strong. It actually surprised me. I had to look up a lot of footage to see how strong it is from high and low investment. Just to see how crazy our teams are. And it makes me really want to, you know, excel for it. Because I have really good electro pieces. And I really want a electro character that I would think would be fun to play all the time. And she's probably the only character that fits that bill right now. Because I need more electro, but eh. I just wanted to talk about this because I think I'm going to do this every year as well because they are going to be new characters here. they are going to be new characters in the characters that I own, like the Dendro Archon here. She's looking cute. But we're also going to have other characters that, you know, even though they are old characters to an extent, if they're characters I've wanted and just, you know, got them at a certain time period, I want to at least shed light on those characters if I can. Just so uh, so that even if it's a character that I want in the future, even though they're old and I don't know when I'll get them, at least I'll know and show that I'm proud to get these characters because I think they're fun to that extent. But now, for character builds, I'm quite proud of my character builds. I don't know if anyone's interested in my builds because I'm probably the definition of a person that's like who else type B, you know. Look at my character. The one that I started characters I plan to at least try to play in the future, but some that aren't like Beto aren't starting, but I do plan on playing them more in the future if I do. Noel, who hasn't started that, he plan to play again in the future. Chung is probably the most 
I'm the most interested in building at this current moment because there's an emblem build on him I actually want to play. I would play this, but I just no, I don't know when I'll do that. But yeah, of course there's the character down here that exists. Here's who tell. I stripped her of her signature weapon that I managed to get. So she's running dragons me. But she has my one and only double crit goblin. Got Sans Flower. Crit rate circlet. And this was really hard for me to come to a conclusion because this actually does less damage than my most optimal build with Homa. And without it, because all it takes is a Sans to swap. But I did this just to be a little bit more on the crit rate side. And it actually is not that far behind it in damage compared to every other build variant I did because it, it's crazy. I try to go for substance, so it's not easy to get what I want it to be. But yeah, the, the, the current team we got here. We have Yelan, her builds this. LG, if you care to want to see a look at it. Shincho, looking smexy. Favonius. A bless if you care to see it. Zhang Li, probably my most well built character because it's actually crazy how he is my most well built character now. Probably because of this weapon, but probably because of his goblin. This is his build. You'd probably be like, wait, it, it doesn't look that bad. Well, if I didn't show it before, I'll show it again. Flower, feather, sands, which I would have the chance to show the better, you know, case of the build. This goblet's insane. Circlet is an HP circlet. So if I had a crit rate circlet on, food for thought, this would be my build. You know, that's just insane to me. And that's just the whole understanding of it. If I wanted to like make his meteor do more damage while having a decent shield, or if I want to just go crazy with it. I could even have 6250, which is cool to see that, but sometimes I think more crit would just be better with the way that his build is. But I just wanted to show that. Kazuma, I have a better EM build, but I changed him to more energy recharge, because <laughs> it's just better. And yeah, here's his artifacts if you care to see it. Ganyu, she is my most uniquely built character on my account, because I showed it before. I showed an attack circuit that looked kind of crazy. Well, she's the one that's holding on to it, because I think Wanda Shoot has my best artifacts. And here's this build. 50 crit rate's fine because her passive gives her 20% more crit rate, which is just quite nice. But take a look at this. Got this, even though this one is worse than this piece over here. At that 0.4% of crit rate's why I keep it. This is still my best artifact on my entire account. This piece is just stupid. <laughs> you know, this, you know, subject to change, of course. I hope I can change this in the future, but I doubt it. And this does more damage than my crit damage circlet and my crit rate circlet. So I just, even if I crit more, which she already crits a lot, so it's not really that bad. But I do have a really good melt build. That is better for you know Wander Shoot's you know playstyle, but Wander Shoot on Ganyu, I'm using this build with Freeze as well because it does more damage than anything Blizzard could ever provide. Plus, I, I don't have a good Blizzard build, so I don't really care to build it because this is just more than enough damage. Again, another one of my best characters, well built, is Raiden Shogun, which I think her build changed a lot compared to last year. I think I was using. Uh, yeah, I was using mostly catch at the time. She now has R5 Waypreaker Spin, which is something I really wanted because this weapon's passive is stupid. But, 
she has some of the best artifacts compared to a lot of people to an extent. But, you know, there's, of course, pieces like this one I want to improve on. But I don't know if I'm going to improve her build if I want to use her rational, they call it. Because I don't really use her that much, even for Bloom, I don't really use her anymore. I haven't used her in a long time, but yeah, this is her build. Nahida, the Dendro Archon. She used to look so much better than this. Right now, I just have her on Favonius Codex and EM stuff, so it doesn't really matter. If you're interested, just look at the pieces. But yeah, that's her build. Traveler used to be on Geo last year, which is funny. He had most of his cracked artifacts given to, you know, John Lee. But, yeah, this is his villain. Even though, I don't really care. This is just a placeholder for him. But, yeah, this is his villain. Oh, no. I think before, I didn't realize I showed her villain. But, yeah, she changed a lot. And what's crazier that this build could be even better because I'm just doing more crit damage in my build just to show off a piece. Just because why not. But we have this piece. This piece is really good, but this is really better overall. This piece, I got this one very recent. I don't like that this is my first 30 uh, yeah my first 30 crit damage elemental goblin I hate it because I only have three hydro characters I use so that, that there you go and circlet's okay but you know so that's kind of fills me but yeah this this is her build she she looks nice doesn't she yeah for a kid that doesn't have a crit essential I think it's quite nice join me uh People would probably think this build is weird, but I have a really strong build that's better than 250 crit damage. 60 something crit rate. This build has the most crit rate in her build, but got EM out the bazaar, but you wouldn't believe how much EM is given because got a crit damage circle. Power cup, I have some of the worst power cup luck, bro. I pyro goblets are some of the worst, but substats elude me. It's still pretty decent for what I can use them for. This attack sans is so god tier, but I'm using almost 200 EM with attack sans. So it's a pretty good build. And there's nothing I can do to change it because it does more damage than my 6250 freaking build, which I have a video on it if you're curious. So I'm not changing it. It's a good build. D Link. I knew I was gonna get a costume ever since they showed it during the freaking Golden Apple Archipelago 2.8. It was a great time. I really loved the story back then in that area. But it wasn't as good as the first one. But it was a decent story because I got to see more Mona screen time. But this is my D Link. I have a video showing off a build that was a little bit better than this but less crit rate and I didn't really like it. So I went for something a little bit more on the crit rate side but it's hard for me to improve this and have this much strength because this build is relying on sub stats like a mother freaking crazy man bro. This is a strong build. I have a stronger deal than most people. I'm pretty high on the costume website. I don't even care to see that but I don't care for it. Cause it's not very accurate but I finally got Grayson and this guy sucks pretty hard but my substance on artifacts is where he shines the sands has been the hardest for me to replace ever I need a good really freaking good EM sands to even want me to do less crit damage in this build it needs more crit rate but a little bit less crit damage rather than a lot so I would need like a 2010 piece to an extent for me to want to replace this because it's just my build's way too good my power goblet is decently serviceable I wish I had better power goblets I just don't have double grip power goblets I only have one I've only got one in two years to even roll and this piece is freaking god I love this piece but yeah that is my D Luke 
interested in this dude, you pretty nice. Anyway, there's other characters that I also uniquely found. This character is just holding on to this because they just have the funniest to have a toss around. I really need the funniest lances, dude. But I can show her off because no one uses Yunjin like this for some reason. I I just find the bus just better than buffing how strong her buffing capability is with the husk scent. Because for some reason I just feel like I do more damage, but it could be wrong because I don't have husk set yet and I don't plan on farming it yet. Rosaria, she's just on a purpose, no bless build, no need to show that. Cookie is very unique, people would probably think this build is not that great, but when I pair it with LG Yalon with the Hyper Bloom team, let me show this off. I got this. 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 Pretty nice, huh? I think it's pretty nice. I'm not in C6 Bennett, right? The only reason why I haven't C6 this boy is because there's a specific team I still use him in, and I just don't want to apply too much pyro in it. And that's the only excuse why I haven't done it yet. But I said I would C6 Bennett if I go to Natlin. So if I ever go to Natlin and I'm have no choice but to see Six Bennett at that point because Pyro Archon is gonna go sicko mode. I'm almost certain that's probably gonna be one of the last good Pyro characters we get in this game. Commander, they not wanna power creep this mother trucker here. This character is way too strong for her own gun. And I don't like playing her either. No matter how good this build is, no matter how good this weapon is on her, and how good these artifacts are. They're not the greatest and not the worst. They service for what I need her to be serviced for. So there it is. This is a good old venti build. Nothing crazy, just yeah, I don't really use her at all. But anyways, look at this. C4 Jean. I have lost the amount of, you know, constellations of her. I've only lost four times in two years of 50-50s. I probably could have lost more if I had summon for characters more, but I don't like every character. So I don't summon for every character. Kaya, 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 Kaya. He was a character I didn't really like in the beginning. I didn't like him very much so. But he has an okay build. 62, uh, 200 is not too bad. The stats are not too bad. I like Doom Melt, Kaya, or even Doom Freezer. This is okay. But yeah, here's his artifacts. Yeah, if you're here. I can't believe Kaya started like my best crit rate circlet on my account because this is my best crit rate circlet on my account. And a C4. I'm getting him C6 this year. But it makes me laugh to say this. I didn't start the day one to get his constellations. I've gotten two constellations off the standard banner of Kaya and I got him two from the shop. So this year I'm going to get the last two for Kaya. Right now, this fake show exists because she's holding on to my I'll hate, uh, my I'll hate them artifacts. Don't worry about it. Ningguang. Now, I don't think I raised her, but I'm showing off characters that I have artifacts on because I'm playing the friendship tenny people, so I'm not going to show this another year for now. Her ratio used to look better than this because I moved around artifacts a lot thanks to Mr. Zhong Lee. Kenny's such a good villain. But. I can show her artifacts off. I do like playing her occasionally, even though I hate using Callus, but she's one of those Callus that doesn't really feel that bad to play. So, it's funny that she's the only character in this game I think I've never summoned on a banner that had Ningguang on it to get C6. I got her C6 off of just summoning from weapons. I've only summoned on weapon banners and got her C6 that way. I find that really hilarious though. So, yeah, yeah, I want to build. Candace is holding on to my Shunha artifacts. Yeah. Thing is, I do plan on playing this character. But I don't know when I'm going to play this character. It's funny because even though her build is really bad, there's just weird builds I want to try with Candace or Kandake. I know how to see this. But yeah, if you're curious about what my Shunha build would kind of look like, this is just kind of what it looks like you just want just enough crit rate to get the job done like either with this to have more attack 
or Favonius lands to have, you know, a good proc of Favonius. Amber, funny thought, I have received one guy got that off of the Sander Banner. I think that's pretty much it for the characters. Some of them are cute and dissy looking and interesting, right? But some of them I won't ever play unless I get a specific character for them. So that's why this guy's still sitting here. But yeah. What it's worth, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope I didn't take up too much of your time. I think I talked more about things I don't usually do or haven't done in a while. But things are just, you know, checking out the account compared to last year. I don't know how long this video is going to be because throughout the time that we've had, we had a decent time with the story quests. We had, you know, a really, really, really cool time with this game starting out in our you know first year going into our second year with after the lantern of you know, 2.4 now we had the lantern of 3.4 the last patch before this one we're currently at, at this current time period and we had a bunch of other stories afterwards but like after the one year that it started we had probably one of the best story quests ever being the chasm event that was like awesome the, the chasm story quest to archon quest was one of the best i've ever enjoyed from archon quest despite how long it was as well and into the next region really really good story Sumeru ended up being more than i thought it would be in terms of the story because i honestly was just a little worried because Sumeru was my favorite region having a rainforest and a desert and it really delivered. I really, 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 really enjoyed it. I just cannot believe the the amount, the effort that they put into those story quests did better than how Inazuma did to me. And I don't know if people really agree with me on that, but it is what it is. Some people's favorite regions are different than others, and I can understand if you have a favorite region. But my favorite region is Sumeru for the story. But I had it on my scope since the Tavat Chapters video that is on YouTube. As now we are closing out of Sumeru because I've learned that now we went from 2.5 last year to 3.5 this year. We are about to closely get into another ship. We just had another Archon Quest this past with Dainsley. And we are about to prepare to move on to another region. We are in Sumeru, the Nevat chapter go from Sumeru to Fontaine. Fontaine is going to be a very interesting and controversial region, I'm almost certain of it, and it's going to be pretty fun to see how that region plays out, and I'm looking forward to it, because after that, we have the region that I'm most worried about being Natlin. I have no idea how that one's going to turn out as well, but it's my next region I'm looking forward to going towards, as we only got three regions left until the end of this main story of this game, Genshin Impact. But with that, I have set my piece. I've showed as much footage as I could, and I hope that you saw all of this that I have shown. I really compiled a lot going into this and a lot of things I wanted to show. So I hope that everything kind of flowed okay. I don't know how this is going to turn out, but here we are. We finally got everything you know, compiled, and I hope that next year we can do better. Last year we were in Inazuma, and now we're in Samara. And next time, we'll be in Fontaine. Perfect!